So we're going to look at how to create holes and trim various elements and use uh, the cut tool as well in this video. Um, holes are created in all sorts of different ways and I'd like to kind of just go through the various processes and try to explain what's happening um, with some of the tools which automate a process. So I'll come around to the wall, let's start off with the wall because walls are fairly easy to sort of edit. So once we've created the wall, this one's going from ground up to the third floor. And a couple of ways, we can start off with selecting the wall and then just editing the profile. Now, the things you have to bear in mind when you edit a profile is that if I use uh, the rectangle tool on this, it's already uh, associated its um, surface because the wall is the thing that's being uh, edited, so we don't have to set the plane in which we're working. And if I wanted to create a rectangle, it's going to draw it on that plane. So it's just going to line up through very nicely. I'm going to do any extra adjusting in that respect. And providing this gives us a separate boundary to the wall boundary, all is going to be fine. If I say OK to that, then we've got this situation. Now to get rid of the hole, I have to edit boundary and select the hole and delete it. And then it's gone. If I decided to create a boundary by drawing in this sort of location. Now we haven't got a closed boundary. We've got this thing, which is its own boundary, but it crosses at this point. So if I try to create a hole there, it's going to tell me that lines cannot intersect each other. Okay, So I can either continue or quit sketching. So if I continue, I could possibly think that maybe I could drag this down to that line. But now I've got overlapping lines, so that's still no good. What I need to do is create a boundary line that comes up and around and down and back around there. So to get this to work, I'd have to select this line and delete it. And then this one has to be trimmed. So the first thing you do is split it. So that's SL, split it there. And then I can use this trim to corner. And just remember it's selecting the objects you want to keep. So that line and that line, and this line and this line. So now I've got my boundary which goes all the way around and I can say okay to that and everything's happy. So that's the first thing that you can do. The other thing is kind of automates a, a process whereby it creates a void form and then sort of applies it to the surface. So in this instance we will look at a wall opening. So you're limited on a wall opening to the rectangular object. So if I click on this thing here, wall opening, and then I have to sort of select the wall. So it says down on the bottom, select wall to create a rectangular opening. So I choose the wall and again it just knows uh, where to align it and then I can just draw a rectangle on the surface and we're good. So it just does it automatically. And then I go back to the modify tool and so I can select the rectangular opening. So hover over that, it tells me I'm selecting the rectangular opening and this allows me then to expand or on the fly as it were and not to worry about anything else. Uh, this one if I wanted to adjust this then I have got the handles which is quite useful but I don't have the handle on the bottom just on the top so I can stretch it out but I can't do anything about this bit whereas this thing allows me to stretch in all directions. So to get this bottom line adjusted I would again have to go into edit profile. Now if I want to delete this hole then I can select the actual hole itself and then hit delete and that tidies up this. This is something I can't do for this. I have to go back into the boundary edit and adjust it. Now the only real issue we have with a wall opening is that it's rectangular and only rectangular. So if you wanted a different type of object that we could adjust without editing the boundary then we have to use a slightly different method but there are a few more steps that we need to consider. And for us to do that, I'll take us into the component. So we're going to make an object, which is a component effectively. So click on this and drop down to model in place because we need to model and a void form. And I'll click on model in place and we'll call it because it's associated to walls. It doesn't matter what we call it, but this is for more cataloging purposes. So I'll go down to walls so we can assign it to the walls section. Then say OK. We'll call it wall hole. that and then say OK to that. Now before we start drawing these objects we need to make sure we set our 
surface. So click on set, pick a plane, OK, and then we can pick this surface. That's one extra sort of process we need to go into. Once we've got that, we can then use these tools. Now these are our um, void and solid tools. Now I can use void forms to choose a void extrusion, void blend, or I can just use these and turn it into a void later. So I'll just for ease, I'll just use the extrusion tool because we're just going to have a simple extrusion. I'll show you the sweep tool around the, the surface of the roof a bit later on. But what I'm going to do is just choose the, I'll choose the, the circle tool, for instance. I wanted the circular hole in here that could be adjusted later on. Then I can click on that. And then I say OK. And what that's done is created this form. Okay, if I just click away from that, you can see I've got this thing which is a solid form at the moment, and I can pull these ends into the building. And I can zoom around so you can see there's a great big sort of tube sticking through the building. Now if I wanted to use this tool, the cut tool, I couldn't use it with a solid object. I need to make sure that it's a void object. So with this selected, I can change my category data from solid to void and then that makes it sort of a different color and it's slightly invisible and then I can use this to cut out the wall so I go back to my cut geometry and notice I've still got another step to go I'm not I've not finished the model yet lots of these things are grayed out this the model itself is slightly grayed out so I'm still in the editing of this form as opposed to back to the geometry of the model so with the cut tool, I select the wall first, and then I choose the object I'm going to cut. So I click on that, and that's formed the opening in the wall. Now I can still select this void form, and I can move it to a different position. And it's going to move that hole. And then I can say finish editing, and I've done that. Now I can't adjust the form at this level of editing. I need to go back in to that form to do anything about it. So I could click on it because it tells me it's a, an object, it's a wall and it's a wall hole. So I could click on that and then I have to edit in place and then I can select this object by hovering so near the edge Then I'll pick up that void extrusion and then I've got to go to edit extrusion so I'm moving down another tier in the editing so I get back to ultimately the path and I can just select that and drag it in move it or I could change the shape of it by adding in some other type of shape and then if I wanted to trim out to this I can use a trim tool I'll keep that and that and I'll keep that and this so I've got that form created and I can say OK to that so I've now edited my void form and then I say finish the model so I've now got an interesting shaped hole in my wall, which I couldn't do with the wall tool, because that only creates rectangular ones. I could have done it with the edit profile. I could certainly make that sort of shape, but notice that in edit profile, that thing disappears, because effectively the wall is still intact in this place. It's just created a, a form that's obscuring the brickwork. I'm not sure whether it actually reduces the volume of the wall uh, or the surface area of the wall, but uh, anyway that's something you could investigate at your leisure so I'll just click on this tick so different ways to create openings and holes uh, using various different tools now we'll also look at creating a shaft so the shaft is again like the wall opening tool but it's it's really used for vertical uh, surfaces like floors for example and I could use exactly the same methods as I use on the wall for the floors but we'll use the shaft tool and this one starts off with base constraints. So we haven't got to set our um, surface planes. This is basically using our levels. So level zero, and I'll say, um, I'll go 500 millimeters above level zero. So if I just say 500 there and apply that, and we'll go up to level two and 150 mil above level two. So that's level zero, level one, level two. So it's gonna come in uh, just above here. I'm gonna cut through these two floors. So I'll show you the flexibility of the shaft tool. It's great for so multi-storey stairs or spiral stairs or any other type of void form that you've got 
um, coming through floors saves you having to edit the profile of the floor each time. So once we're happy with our levels, then we can just take our tool and this time we'll have a inscribed polygon and we'll draw it sort of down here. So it's gonna be about 500 mil above the floor. And you can work this in 3D or 2D. If I go to my level one floor plan, you should be able to see the shape so we can move it around. Maybe we put it in the center there and drag these things in just a little bit. So we've got a weird shaped opening in the floor. And once we're happy with that, we can say, okay. So that's gonna create holes in the floor. I'll go back to the 3D so we can see what's happened. So this then is the shaft void. I'll just drag that up. And I could take this up through the roof, which should form a hole in the roof, and I could take it right down through the floor. It doesn't affect the topography, but everything else it does. Okay, so that, again, if you want holes that are in line with each other, then this shaft tool is pretty useful. And again, if I select this opening and then edit sketch, I can see the sketch down here. So I could make some adjustments to that. Maybe I want it to be a bit more interesting down to this point. And then I can say, okay, to that, and that's gonna affect the shape of that. And it just controls the shape of the shaft opening. Okay, so that's another thing that you can do with the opening tools. Now by face, then that creates an opening that is perpendicular to the selected face of a roof, floor, or ceiling. So we've got this thing, this thing, or a ceiling. It won't work with walls, this one. Okay, so you've got to use that, and that restricts you to rectangles only. So we'll end this uh, at this point, and then I'll show you how we can use uh, these similar sorts of methods with the uh, components modeled in place to just tidy up maybe a roof edge or make an interesting sort of edge detail to one of these generic roof types.